All right, so what are some of the biggest mistakes that people are making with Instagram influencer shout outs? It makes me just want to jab them in the neck. What are you doing that for? What are you doing? Come on, dude. No, I'm just messing around. But yeah, some of these mistakes, man, it gets me so upset. I'm like, do this. You know, make sure you do it right. Don't waste any money. I figured I'd make this video for you guys going over some of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of people making when it comes to, you know, running in Instagram influencer shout out. So for those of you guys that are brand new, welcome on over to the VFAM. The VFAM is a family of, of individuals that are striving to do a lot more than what society has offered us to do. So of course, if you guys want to see more videos like this of me going over, you know, Instagram shout outs, but also, you know, specific mistakes that I see a lot of people making, make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video. Any questions that you have, make sure you drop them below in the comments. Of course, I'll respond to you guys. And of course, if you haven't already, smash that subscribe button, join the VFAM, you know, and let's get to it. These mistakes that I see come from social media and people that I have reaching out to me, you know, asking me either to give them feedback on their store, on their ads, whatever the case may be. And this is where I get the data from. So this is why I'm, you know, I'm showing you guys these mistakes that I see. Because again, I, I see these mistakes happening more than once. So I figured why not? You know, kind of just clarify all of it. One of the first things I see a lot of people doing is they don't do research on the products that they're running um, shout outs for, right? That's important because again, when it comes to e-commerce and dropship or just business overall, right? You don't want to waste capital on unnecessary things, right? So running an Instagram influencer shout out on a product that you haven't even researched is literally wasting money on an unnecessary thing. There's specific ways that you guys can learn how to do product research. When you're running your Instagram influencer shout outs, you're taking the time to do the research to find out if the product you know, is even wanted in the marketplace and if it's even hot, right? There's no point of running ads to a product that isn't wanted in the marketplace or isn't hot. There's no need to you know, shove a product down people's throats to try to hopefully you know make sales right there's no need for that now there's so many different things you guys can do to find these products and again if you guys have trouble with it make sure you check out the video that i have on finding hot products right i literally have a step-by-step -step process that i went through there's this connotation that people have that you know everything works on the, on the first try and you know believe it or not i actually failed miserably or terribly with my first instagram influencer shout out right it went horrific i paid i think like 25 it was 25 dollars i paid and i got no sales within a whole 24 hours i found out the reason why and it was because again i chose the wrong product to do it in because i tried another product same budget same influencer and then and it ended up doing a lot better so it goes just goes to show obviously we want to do the research take the time to do so now one of the biggest mistakes i also pe see people not doing is not using video ads We've tested over and over again on Facebook and on Instagram, and we've te split tested between images and videos. And a good portion of the time, videos do a whole lot better, right? That's just, you know, we like seeing videos a lot more than just images because in, with the video, you can see the actual product being used and a whole lot more. So a mistake I see a lot of people doing is when they run their Instagram influencer shout out, they only, you know, set up their post to be made with, uh, you know, with images and that's what they want the influencers to use. You know, when it comes down to it, you want to double down on what works. That seems to work a lot better on Facebook. So if it works a lot better on Facebook, why not? Why wouldn't it work a lot more, a lot better on Instagram, right? You know, when you think about Instagram and the platform, people are there to see pictures and videos. So why not take advantage and you know test both? Now, there may be cases where images work a little bit better, or there may be cases where images will work a whole lot better. But honestly, it all comes down to the testing. But based on the testing that we have done in our research and some of the things that I've seen other people test, videos hands down have been doing a lot better and of course if you guys can't find the best videos off the jump make sure you take the time to do so people buy based on you know things that they see right when they're buying things online doing you know specifically drop shipping products they're buying off of impulse right we call those impulse buys products where they see it they like it it looks good and they'll buy it, right they're not thinking too much about it but if you don't have a clear video you know that's really demonstrating the product in a uh, in a way that makes the customer want it you know nice and clear it can lower the chances that the customer actually buys. So you want to make sure you obviously have good videos. The next one is not using a niche product. Now this is a mistake because usually when you're finding pages on Instagram, these pages are built around different things. It might be a beauty page, it might be an outdoor page, a sports page, whatever the case may be. So these pages are you know usually niche specific. So if you don't, if you have like a generic product that you're reaching out to, let's say a beauty influencer from the post on their page and it's a generic product, that audience isn't gonna be as receptive to a generic product or a general product than they would be to a specific beauty product, right? So you wanna make sure that you're using niche specific products. Now, it's fine if you have a general store, but specifically with influencers, 
find the ones that are correlated to the specific products that you're marketing at the time, right? Whatever you're driving traffic to, find an influence around that specific you know, product. That way it actually you know, correlates with their page because that's gonna give you a much higher chance of getting a lot more sales and conversions. If you try to market to everyone, you are less likely to make sales on that page. When you're use, finding your niche specific product, whatever, let's say you're doing the beauty, you're finding a beauty specific product and then you're finding a beauty influencer, make sure that you're testing you know, beauty products. You're not gonna test general products on the beauty page just because you may have gotten sales on the previous post with the beauty product, right? That's not how it works. You wanna keep it, everything, you wanna keep everything correlated, right? That's always how it has to be. So uh, an example is by using a niche product, you can sell a dog phone case on a dog lover's page, right? You see how that makes sense? Now, for example, something that wouldn't make sense would be Let's say you have a pancake mixer or a pancake flipper. There was at least pancake flipper flippers that were pretty hot at one time. Trying to market that on the you know pet or dog influencer page, that doesn't make much sense, right? So you wouldn't want to do that. So make sure that you're finding niche specific products and then you're also finding niche specific influencers. Again, uh, pretty simple. May it sound like you know, yeah, obviously everybody does that, but I just want to make sure that I'm getting the point across here, right? Because I do see people, you know, trying to market general products. Uh, specific pages right like a dog page like we just said that's a huge mistake that's not gonna work you want to test with the least amount of capital you need to right it's just gonna be more expensive if you do these things incorrectly because it's they're not gonna generate you sales so you're gonna think you do you, you know you're doing something wrong but in reality it was just one simple thing like not having a specific kind of product for a specific page that you didn't do right so you want to make sure that you're just saving yourself again you know money and the way you can do that is by simply making sure you're not doing some of these silly mistakes. And don't worry, because I've actually made a lot of these mistakes now that I think back when I was first getting started, you know, I made a lot of these. So for those of you guys that are either just getting started or you may already be running a successful e-commerce business, just make sure you guys don't do this. Again, my goal is to help you guys prevent you from making any single mistakes that I can possibly help with. The next part is, of course, you know, when you are running your Instagram influencer shoutouts, making sure that your Instagram influencer is legit, right? I see a lot of people that say, hey, this guy said, you know, he wants, you know, he has, he's had a ton of people, you know, run promos on his page and they've made, and they've had a great amount of success. You should do one as well. And then they hook them in, they end up paying the influencer and they don't get any sales, right? So you want to make sure that you always have a list of things that you're looking for when you're deciding on what kind of influencers you guys want to work with right and this is like a list that i have like kind of like a go-to list that whenever i'm thinking about you know working with a new influencer i kind of go through it just to kind of make sure that it actually makes sense for me to work with this influencer some of the key things that i look for when i'm looking for you know what specific instagram influencer i want to work with is the engagement right you want to check the comments and the people that are commenting you want to make sure that i'm using bots make sure that i'm using you know engagement groups because a lot of people do use engagement groups for those of you guys that don't have too much time to you know spend all day doing this once you learn how to do it yourself you can then hire an assistant of course we're all about working smart here hire an assistant to simply do this for you and whatever you have to pay them you know you can hire them for really cheaply you know just to you know, whatever that it may cost you, every single, you know, everybody is different. They may not, some can be more expensive than others, but you can hire an assistant to take care of this whole process for you. And literally this whole process can't take that long. Maybe it might take them two hours to check, you know, over more than 10 or 20 influencers. Those two hours, whatever you pay them, it'll automatically be worth a lot more than if you were to run an inf Instagram influencer shout out and lose money on it. Does doing this myself, is it gonna cost me money or is it gonna make me money, right? That's what I think about almost everything. Every single thing I have to do in e-commerce or any kind of business I'm involved with, that's how I think about it. Cross-check with Social Blade. For those of you guys that don't know Social Blade, it's actually a website you guys can check for, you know, to see everybody's social following, right? On Instagram, YouTube, it lets you know how many followers people are getting daily, how many they have gone over the past. And you can actually see a graph of how their followers have grown over time. So obviously, if you see that one day they're getting a thousand followers but then the next day they're losing half of them obviously they're not a legit page they're buying followers so you, you want to make sure you're looking out and you're not running into pages that you know they're just buying followers and they're taking advantage and you know ripping people off so you know make sure you guys look out for that another tool you guys can use is this website called flanks i may have 
you know, uh, pronounce that terribly. I'm, you know, I'm not that good with sometimes of pronouncing, you know, new words. But Flanks, uh, this website has an engagement calculator that calculates the average in interaction per post, and it kind of looks like this right here. I had, had it pulled up, so you can literally type in any Instagram handle here. It'll pop up, and it'll let you know their engagement rate. Now, as far as the numbers that you guys should be looking out for, um, usually this is the kind of rule of thumb that I saw, kind of industry wide, that I see people looking out for that you know run consistent Instagram influencer shout outs. So this is actually the same kind of numbers that I look for when I'm deciding on, you know, what Instagram influencer I'm going to work with. So again, anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000 followers, usually the engagement around 3% makes sense. Anything of once, basically the higher the amount of followers the influencer has, usually the lower the engagement is just because of course there's a lot more people. So you have 100,000 followers to 500,000 usually you want to look for anywhere from 2% to 5% engagement and anything of like 500,000 plus to so millions usually 1% or higher is a good rate you know for their engagement obviously because they have so many followers these are the numbers that I have also seen from some other people that I know that again run a lot of Instagram influencer shout outs and have worked really well for them so try it out let me know how that goes now one of the last and most important pieces that I see a lot of people not utilizing to the full capabilities and making a huge mistake on is not having a backend system in place. Now you guys, a lot of you guys have been following me for a while and watching some of my other videos. You guys know that I'm huge on having a backend system in place. That's where a lot of money is to be made. So you wanna make sure, of course, you have an abandonment cart sequence going out for all the customers that are coming into your website and are looking at the product putting it in their cart, but not obviously checking out the time. That's huge because you guys are gonna get tons of people that click on your ad and your influencer shout out, go to your page, but don't buy it. That's normal. You know, some of us, you know, we're on our phones, we look at a product, we see it, but then we get distracted because we see a hot girl, hot guy, we see, we think about food, we're hungry, whatever the case may be, we're only human, right? So the fact, if you don't have abandoned cart email sequences in place for everybody that comes to your store and doesn't check out, making a huge mistake and is, you're literally losing out on free money. I had it down here. It's literally free money because again, these emails are automated. It takes you some time to set them up, but after you set them up, everybody that comes into your store and doesn't check out automatically get put into place into the sequence and get these emails automatically going out to them and you have a lot higher of a chance to make sales with these emails going out then without the emails going out, that's guaranteed. So make sure you guys take advantage of that. Of course, uh, some of the ways you guys can follow up with these emails, if you don't know what kind of emails to have in place, you can have some content following up on, you know, maybe some of the benefits of the product that they came in to get. For the example that I, I always use is, if you're selling, let's say, women's leggings, you can send out an article saying like seven benefits of, you know, leggings, and this is why you should get your pair today. Something like that, right? You send an article, you put a button at the bottom, and you let them know a little bit of a message saying like, this is why you guys should get the product today. That could be one email going out, the next one could be a discount code, and one of the next emails you guys can have, again, is an upsells, or upsells to different or similar products that are you know related to the product they came in to get. So these are all emails or examples of different things you guys can have in the emails you're sending out, but you wanna make sure you have these emails. If you don't have these, go ahead and set these up right now. I'm telling you guys, it's literally free money. Now again, not every single email that goes out is gonna automatically make you sales, but I guarantee you, if you have these in place, you're gonna make sales. Guaranteed, no question about it. Again, now for those of you guys that are more advanced and know more about Facebook ads, you wanna make sure that you have reta retargeting campaigns in place. Fun fact, a majority of our campaigns are actually retargeting campaigns. We have, of course we have campaigns for the products to show it to the customer the first time, but all we have a lot more campaigns to retarget customers to remind them of the product that they saw, but also other products that are similar to the one they came in to see. So again, Retargeting is huge because again, this is a reminder to the customer that they came in to see this product, they were interested, they may have just forgotten, that's cool, but now you have another chance to get the product so they can click on the ad and get the product at that moment. That is huge. I would say a lot of the people that you guys see marketing online, you know, running e-commerce, you guys can ask them, right? A lot of the guys that are, you know, really huge in e-commerce or just running ads overall, a majority of their ads are retargeting campaigns or, you know, they really don't try to focus on, you know, the first time that a person sees their ad. They want to hammer these people. So even though they didn't, they couldn't make the purchase the first time, they're seeing that ad over and over and over again until they eventually die, right? The, there's this funny saying 
Uh, I forgot where I found it from, but it's either you retarget people and so they either buy or they die. So uh, that's huge because again, you want to keep reminding people, you want to keep following up. When I was doing door to door sales, I would have no trouble with my first interactions, right? The hardest part was consistently following up with the customer all the way up until the point where they signed the contract and I closed the sale. You know, it's the same thing with e-commerce, right? A majority of the time is going to be focused on retargeting in the back end system. You know, that's just a part of the game, how it is, right? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much everything I had for you guys today. I hope you guys got value from this video. Again, if you did get value from this video, going over the biggest mistakes I see people making within Instagram influencer shout outs. I know I kind of went off topic a little bit at the end. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like. And of course, any questions that you guys had along the way, drop it in the comments below. I'll be responding to you guys. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, join the VFAM, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.